All right, modern, modern elves. So this is currently one of my three favorite decks in modern. This, uh, this deck, Hardened Scales and Amulet Titan, I think are my three favorites. Um, this deck is a Cold Buck. Thanks for the brand new Prime support. Welcome, welcome. I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me employed here. And thanks, Radley. Um, this deck is my tournament deck of choice out of those three generally, just because this deck is what I would describe as the least mentally taxing. It doesn't have complicated puzzles like Amulet Titan. There's some onboard math, but there's not a ton like with Hardened Scales. And this deck very consistently kills people by turn four. It regularly it can sometimes kill people by turn three. And it generates a lot of card advantage with things like Collect a Company and Lead the Stampede to grind out some longer games on occasion. I've been addicted to YouTube and decided to check out this Twitch thing. I am old. That free is bad. Well, I appreciate you setting up the Twitch Prime there. That, that Twitch Prime really helps pay my bills and keeps me around. I mean, JAC is a fun deck, but I think it's definitely less powerful than those other three I just listed. Thank you for everything you do, Rockin' Zanier. Thank you for the 17 month resub. Welcome back. Thanks for shipping your Bezo Bucks back this way again this month. I should update the Stream Decker. I did already. Oops, look at that. Look at that, on the ball. If you are not someone who likes keeping one landers, this is not the deck for you. You're gonna keep a lot of one landers with this deck. As someone who's played L's for years in multiple formats, I love the fact that you can Coco into double shaman and kill people out of nowhere. Me too. Basic forest, elvish mistake. Who's ready to get scritted? Hopefully they're not a Chalice of the Void deck. I guess it's probably a little bit tough for us either way because if they're not a Chalice of the Void deck, they probably have Bolt and Scred. This is like a Bolt Scred Anger matchup. All right, looks like looks like we missed on our on our second land here. This is how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Oh. Magic, gambling, etc., etc. Happy New Year, Maltmeister. Thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. Um, worth noting that I would estimate this match is probably really bad for us. In addition to lots of spots remo spot removal, the opponent's deck often also plays Anger of the Gods. So... Well, I mean, Elvish Mystic and Land War Elves are, like, literally the same card. So, like, there's really no consideration there between the two. The six mana Chandra, we can concede to that one. Mouth of Roman. All right, got it. I got more. I got more Neo Bars in the mail. They're great. Hashtag sponsored. I think I want to just get Scooze going here. And the Neo Bars, they look like in person exactly what they look like on the website. They're chocolate on the outside with like crispy wafer in the middle.
So I'm pretty sure that even though they have like hazards and dragons, I'm not supposed to dismember in this matchup. Oh, I guess like clan color leaves a bit to be desired. Maybe two dismembers is fine. I definitely want the extra lead the stampede. So I want a way to generate some card advantage against their plethora of spot removal and sweepers that they're going to have. Maybe I just want a couple of these. I don't think I want all three. Sam's really good. Need to go Mystic into Dub's Druid, lead the Stampede. He's dead. So hoping to just draw any elf next turn. And even if we brick on the elf, we can still technically like play third land, play lead the stampede. All right, cast a Mind Stone or something silly. And then we can draw an elf, play company, play lead the stampede, get anger to the gods, rebuild after. Eidolon, sure. Perfect. What do I think of Scred? I think Scred is a slow deck that doesn't provide an efficient clock that also doesn't do anything particularly impressive and lacks meaningful interaction to be competitive against a lot of the decks that are otherwise good and modern. You want to make sure you stack your triggers here so your Dwinnin's Elite makes the token before your Shaman of the Pack trigger resolves. What do you really think about Scred listing? You're not gonna, you're never gonna get anything but honesty on this stream, okay? That's true. Scred, Scred did in fact win a Grand Prix. You're not wrong. And I'm sure I'm about to lose this match, which is gonna cause some some random idiot to leave comments in my YouTube section about how Scred's so great and it's obviously better than his because because you lost to Scred with your health deck. One of the reasons why people love Modern as a format is because decks like Scred that aren't fantastic against a lot of the things that exist in Modern occasionally find matchups like Elves where they do genuinely line up really well against what we're doing. Their deck with basically eight lightning bolts and a bunch of sweepers is good against our elf deck. Like that's just that's just the the truth of the situation. Would you recommend to replace Pendel and Cavern of Souls for budget purposes? Well, the Pendel Haven should just be another forest, and the uh, Cavern of Souls should be unclaimed territory. All right. They did a whole lot of nothing and they died. God bless. Hopefully we can have a, a repeat of that for the next game. Do I want Rex Sage in my deck? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm just going to run it back. Seems fine. Not, not amazing, but fine. We're so close to a sword. What's going on, Scorch? And thank you. Tempo Storm announcement is very exciting. It's going to be a sweet 2019 for sure. Not only for me, but for Magic in general, it looks like.
They could theoretically still have Bloodbin in their deck against us. It's like worth noting. Oh, Guilt Leaf. Well, if you want, if you want budget replacements for Guilt Leaf, you should check my article on Cool Stuff Inc. There's a there's a, a budget deck list up there. It's like other dual lands is the answer that you seek. Uh, I don't know, Jackal Girl. To answer to answer your question, I did I did put in an application with three brick counters on it. Remove a brick counter, draw a card. Okay. I uh, I have literally never read this Magic the Gathering card before. an interesting one that card is is modern legal hey thundering bumpkin thanks for the five dollar tip i appreciate it Ooh, where's my dashboard deck for five here Thank you for bringing sensible and critical analysis to the Magic community. The informational nature and curate, curated of your content cannot be understated. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Thanks for thanks for helping keep me around. All right. So don't anger me, bro. We've got what? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, yeah, I, I technically have lethal in play here, but I assume some amount of these green creatures are about to leave the board here. The gods are very angry. Oh, four mana is good for me. <laughs> four mana bodes very well for me. They could cough into, yeah, into a sweeper. Yeah, they can go cough, sweeper, plus, plus use the pyramid. So probably dead here. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty dead at this point. All right, I mean, like, collected companies like the one card that could maybe keep us in the game. So let's go. I mean, when, like, the other cards your deck uh, that are competing for slots in your deck are, like, Mind Stone and, you know, Scred, it's probably not hard to find upgrades like uh, Sunset Pyramid here. <laughs> Man, it's been a while since I've had a, since I've had a one-er, <laughs> a one-hitter on the, uh, on the old collected company and worth noting there like i had a i had a dismember in there so like if i wouldn't have boarded in the dismembers i would have hit two off that company it's pretty good if the uh, if they don't have a removal spell or a discard spell on one, we like get to uh, get to head off to the races very quickly here. And that's just that's just how magic goes, right? Like even even the best decks in modern like have matchups that are like basically unwinnable for them, and you shouldn't you shouldn't like like uh, the the knee jerk reaction a lot of magic players have is like they'll watch me like get dumpstered by scred there and they'll like really love this elf deck and they'll be like oh man Jeff how do we how do we fix the scred matchup and the answer is just that like you don't. You just like hope to not play against, you know, one of the 400 scred players in the area in any given tournament that you play in and just like hope, hope to like, you know, get run past it basically. Elvish Arc Druid was one of the, our best draws there. So let's hope this doesn't, if this dies in response here, we could be really far behind. Yeah, I, I decided I didn't feel like doing a second Legacy deck this morning, Goalie. It'll be, it'll be at the top for next time we do Legacy. I finished. I finished with Dead Guy L, and I just needed to, needed to play a different format. Some kind of Eldrazi deck. It did say my opponent was one and three, so they might be doing something that's kind of, uh, let's say, interesting.
Uh, people paid me small piles of money to play Legacy, so we dipped back into Legacy. It'd been a while. It'd been a while since I played it, and some of my my bigger donators asked if they could. They could do it. So for larger donations moving forward, I'm gonna have some amount of Legacy in the mix for you, for folks. Got a few few in the queue now, and I think moving forward for fifty plus dollar donations, I'll allow people to add Legacy decks still. Variety. Variety is good. I don't enjoy every aspect of Legacy, but there's some parts that are interesting. And especially playing decks like uh, Pack Spanish Inquisition on occasion is just like a good time. His employment's been terminated. Alright. Survey says... Oh, is that, is that all? I guess, I guess I should have played this out first, huh? I've missed, I've missed two points of damage here. They should be, they should be at six. That is true, goalie. You are you are the the re enabler. Oh, I could have cast the Scavenging Ooze last turn too, right? Yeah, it looks like they're playing the Footsteps, Footsteps Reanimator here. Honestly, my opponent probably shouldn't have showed us these cards, because now I know I get to bring in, like, Surgical Attraction and stuff. So, you board out, lead the Stampede in the matches where your opponent's not really grinding usually, and then Surgical and Scavenging Ooze are both pretty reasonable here. Trim a Clan Caller is the last one. Quick Submit. So they're gonna have things like Ashen Rider and Elishnorn and stuff like that. Elishnorn, very good against us, believe it or not. Is Elish good? Elish is good against go wide decks, right? Elish, Elish confirmed good for the same reason. Um, what's it called? Is good. Uh, we've not boarded in Frexion Revoker today. We played against Scred, and now we're playing against some kind of reanimator build. It seems like not amazing, but it's fine. Nothing, nothing to, nothing to write home about. But here we are. The Revokers are fine. It's like, I feel like whenever I add a new sideboard card to a deck like this, something that I've been working on, everybody who's like played the deck is just always like, but Jeff, but Jeff, did it break it? Did it fix all the problems that the deck has? It's like, no, it's like, it's like fine. You like, you look at it and you go, yeah, that's a card I'm happy to have in my sideboard. It like helps some of my matchups a little bit at a marginal cost. You like get to hit it off, lead the steed lamp stampede and collect a company. So I'm playing the Heritage Druid out before the Dwinnens Elite here because I don't want them to be able to respond to the Dwinnens Elite trigger by killing my Land War Elf. Let's see, and I uh, came together here. I'm excited to get Anger of the Gods this turn. Are they dead next turn if they don't sweep the board? We're attacking for one, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this is going to trigger for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to hit them for uh, infinite. Surgical extraction. Sign me up. Trigger. Can I ask what you're hedging against Revokers? Yeah, Revokers is just like a flexible card that comes in in a lot of spots. It's good against KCI because Phyrexian Revoker notably shuts off mana abilities, so you can name KCI with Phyrexian Revoker. It also names Engineered Explosives in that matchup if you like already have a Damping Sphere in play. It's fine against Tron because it shuts off Ugin and Oblivion Stone. 
It's like not terrible against blue white control because you can name Jason Teffrey. All right, they had the sweeper. They were missing the land. Got it. So they're at two with two pain lands in play. Go. Yes, it also survives Ugin and doesn't get tagged by all his does, which is not irrelevant. Womp womp. Anytime leaps. It's just like it's just like a flexible card. Just like flexible cards that you can like increase your creature count with to keep your collected companies and your stampedes consistent, I think are just valuable in a deck like this. <laughs> Alright. It's not fantastic, but it's technically lethal. Do you do you have a Doom Blade? Yeah, the, coll the collected companies have not been stellar. All right, it's not not stellar, sometimes still good enough. Onward, onward, upward, backward, forward. How are we doing today, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, 50 hours a week. We play some Modern and some Legacy here on Magic Online. We also play a ton of Standard on Magic Arena. If you find yourself enjoying my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full-time. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their wonderful support. Past subscribing, you can also support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. Harry's Razors would love to help you get that close clean shave using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Google shave. You can save $5 on your brand new starter kit with them. Remember, just because you play the degenerate decks doesn't mean you have to look like it. Neo provides wonderful candy flavored protein bars using code Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Google bar. You can save 10% on all of your orders there with them. Hurley Burley Studios does professional Magic the Gathering altars using code Jeff10 at checkouts with them. You could save 10% on your custom orders there. Border extensions, full art altars, all sorts of fantastic stuff you can find on her website and Instagram. BCW Supplies would love to help you protect your very valuable Magic the Gathering cards, such as my wonderful altars here. They do sleeves, deck boxes, binders, and all sorts of other fantastic gaming accessories using code Jeff10 at bcwsupplies.com. You can save 10% on your orders there with them. And of course, shout out to my new team slash set of sponsors there, Tempo Storm as well, NVIDIA, Red Bull, and all, all that jazz, all the wonderful things they bring along with them. Heading on into our third match here with Elves. Let's see where we... Uh, where we can finish up this league at. Hopefully get the old 3-2 or 4-1. I think I keep this. Like this is like, this is like a really good, a really good six if it's just like minus a land. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what I want to do in the shill bit for Tempo Storm. So, like, I'm not obligated to, like, shill their stuff inside of it, but I feel like I should. But, like, most streamers, e even ones affiliated with teams, like, don't break and plug their sponsors. So, like, my contract with them doesn't include stopping to plug their stuff. Like, when I sell my individual sponsor space, part of that sale sales pitch is, hey, I'm going to plug your stuff once every other hour or so. I technically don't have to do that with the Tempo Storm stuff. But I feel like I should because I do like to represent the brands well that uh, help keep me employed. I've got a shuffling deck, and since I've noticed, my modern decks have been bending at a much slower rate. That's great. All 
I was watching your soul type video on YouTube and you mentioned you don't like deck building on stream because chat makes suggested you without validation. As a rule, if you suggest a card. Yeah, we 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 do that, Veneer. In fact, I think there's probably a chance he pulled that he pulled that rule from my stream. But it still just leads to a bunch of timing people out. That's about it, what it comes down to. And if they, if they want to try and spell Queller this, I get to collect and company them. Just anarchy, baby. I got you, Boomer. So if they just let this resolve, and I think they're supposed to, I'm gonna attack with Dwinnin's Elite plus the Elvish Warrior here. And like, as soon as they flinch, I'll shove this company down their throat. But if they don't flinch, I'm ahead on board, just gonna continue beating them down, so. Sure. Oh, I guess I could get Mausoleum Wanderer here. All right, so I got some two fours here. Thanks, Veneer, I appreciate it. The old, the old double double on that one. All right, so let's tap these three plus this and hit the Coco. I think we just dubs Arc Druid here, right? Actually, I want to Arc Druid plus a Clan Caller because I might actually, I think I have enough mana to double activate Clan Callers next turn. And like both of these are Lords, right? This, this matchup tends to be pretty good for the deck that we're playing because our linear game plan is just much more powerful than their linear game plan and their interaction generally isn't meaningful or fast enough to keep up with what we're doing. Hmm, that's uh that's a shaman of the pack. Alright, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elves. So if I activate this, it makes seven mana. So I think I just do this because I can tap this plus this to get another clan caller. And then if they tap out to like not lose to this and then get to play shaman post combat and just kill them. You think your Coco and a double Lord is good. Wait till you see mine, baby. <clears throat> my Lords, my Lords do stuff. They don't just, my Lords don't just fly. They do incredibly powerful things past that. Am I in love with the Coco? I you could you could in fact argue that I am in love with the Coco. <clears throat> so they should they should just be dead here at this point. So we activate this, and then they take 10, and the Shaman of the Pack kills them. I guess they could have a Path to Exile here with this Noble Hierarch, but they're still probably taking enough that they're going to die. Are we? We're Pathing my Arc Druid, sure. Yeah, so they're still, they're still going to take 8, and then I believe enough of my Elves live that they die. Yeah, they go to 5. Trigger. All 
All right, and this matchup, boarding is very easy. Boarding with this deck is really, if you're ever not sure what you're supposed to board in this matchup, you just need to ask yourself a really easy question. Like, are they killing a lot of your creatures or do they have graveyard synergies? If no, this is an easy cut. And do you care about generating card advantage? Do they have sweepers? If no, you can trim this. So your go-to trims are generally scavenging who's going to lead the stampede. Past that, your trims are usually Elvish Clan Caller and Azuri Renegade Leader, because they're just kind of like more filler cards. You basically never cut your 16 one mana creatures, just like not something that happens. Like I said, I think if you haven't seen me play this deck before, you can find a ton of it on my website and my YouTube channel. I think this deck is just a fantastic middle ground between consistency and killing people. Just like the rate at which it ends the game versus in proportion to the consistency at which it does it is just super impressive to me. I would love another collected company. Thank you. I like only have two lands here, but like I have two lands that I like play out of my hand, right? I want to say thanks for streaming on the weekend. It's the only time I can catch you live. I'm driving a truck. Okay, what's going on, Mini Koopa? Yeah, I'm definitely definitely trying to make sure I get a little get a little variety in my my timelines. Ginger, thank you for the thank you for the six month resub. I appreciate the half a year. Welcome back. Hot take: Frexia Mana should have been four life. Something. It should have been something. I feel like one of the really easy ways they could have balanced Frexian mana is if they would have made it so it's just not straight up colorless. Like if they would have made it so you have to like, like dismember cost black, Frexian black, Frexian black, it would be a lot more balanced. Do 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 do. All right, so if they had a path, they probably would have pathed in response to that trigger, but they could be playing so they can eat one of my things here. So if I attack with these and they path my Arc Druid, they can eat my Elves of Deep Shadow, but then take three. I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with that exchange. So they took they took an extra point of damage. They're on to one card in their hands here. They don't have mana to cast Spell Queller. Like, like next turn I get to company again. Like, things are we're in a pretty good spot here. Will of God, thank you for the two-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, we have to have something like the color of land in play. Like, you have to control a swamp for this to happen, etc. Alright, well, you know. Hit me, dealer. Thunk. Thunk. Don't mind me. Just, just smushing on through. Smush, smush, smush. Lordy, lordy. You got, you got me. You got me. He's on a, he's gone on a path. All right, down to three, go. Man, am I gonna untap with this Arctrid? Is that good? I think that might be good. Oh no! Oh no! I clicked. Oh, that's awkward. Yeah, probably doesn't matter. All right, confirmed. Confirmed doesn't matter. When you draw, when you draw enough collected companies, none of it, none of it matters. All right, after dying to scred, too quick, easy, 2-0 -oh wins. Onward, upward, backward, forward. I forgot, it's been a while since we played a league with this deck. I forgot how good it feels to just like, just like clear a league 3 2 four, one in like an hour. Uh, this hand is super reasonable. It needs, it needs a second land. So it's a little bit, 
I guess I guess I could play the Elves of Deep Shadow on one. Yeah, Deep Shadow's fine. Sure. Uh, this matchup's also pretty okay for us. We could stumble and die here, obviously, but we won't because I'm a professional. Well, since we hit the second land here, this hand is actually pretty close to our borderline best draw. If they don't interact with us, I get to go land, Dwinnin's Elite, Druid, Arc Druid next turn, and then be set up to, like, Clan Caller, lead the Stampede, draw more cards next turn. Yeah, it looks like they're likely playing a Leonin Arbiter deck, Leonin Arbiter Thalia deck, both of which are cards we really don't care about. And they kept a one-lander. So again, I'm going to lead on the Heritage Druid before I play the Dwinnin's Elite. This does give my opponent the opportunity to path my Heritage Druid before I get enough Elves in play to use it, but it denies my opponent the ability to path my Elves of Deep Shadow before I can make a 1-1 one -one off of this, which I think is more valuable. And like if they path any of these as opposed to my Arc Druid, like that's ultimately a win for me. So like kind of, kind of like in a good spot regardless. It's just the deck where this is we're the question deck right we just we we ask the questions here it's like hey hey are you dead is this good enough how does that make you feel do you do you have the thing all right how about the next thing all right how about the how about the one after that Why am I trying Druid again? What do you mean? This is this is my configuration, Quarth. All right, they have a path. Can we do Mardu Tuesday instead of tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm, I'm actually not doing any Magic Online tomorrow. So I'm going to be featured on the front page of Twitch um, every Monday through the end of the month. And I want to make sure my, my time spent on the front page of Twitch is not playing Magic Online, but playing Arena. Which is why I'm doing all Magic Online today. Make up for that a little bit. So I actually want to do, all right, what am I doing here? So if I tap, if I tap these, I can then do this into this into tap three, lead the stampede. You thought I didn't, no, I don't like Nettle Sentinel Quarth. Heritage Druid is very, very good. And one of the reasons why this deck is playable starts, starts like this are fantastic. It's N Nettle Sentinel is the card that a lot of other elf players play that I, that I don't play. All right, green, green, green divination, way better than blue divination. Who'd have, who'd have thunk? Yeah, the, the main difference between, so like obviously elves is an archetype that's existed in modern for a long time. And the big difference between like the build that I've played for a while and the other accepted builds that people have played historically speaking is that I don't play Nettle Sentinel and I play Elves of Deep Shadow because having a turn one accelerant, I think is very, very important to this archetype. The front page exposure actually is not a Tempo Storm dealer. They're just both lining up at the same time. So when my uh, Twitch channel kind of started taking off uh, midway last year, my Twitch partner rep reached out about um, getting me some front page time. So we're going to put a 2-2 two -two into play here. A discard spell is a reason to have put my clan caller into play a little bit sooner. So that could maybe bite me here. So I assume, I assume I'm losing my clan caller here. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, so... I've got plenty of mana. I'm gonna go ahead and do this and put the Shaman into play here. And then we'll just start attacking my 2-2s into their 2-2s. 
Because if any if any of these creatures die, it's actually kind of good for me. Because of my scavenging use gets to get bigger. I think, I think I'm actually just going to run these dorks in here. Because I wouldn't mind idiots ending up in my discard pile. Because it makes the scavenging use big. This like hits them for an extra point and gets my scavenging use bigger. Which I think is an okay exchange for me. If they have another Path to Exile, I feel a little bit bad. If they have a Path to Exile or a Wasteland Strangler, I feel bad about this exchange. It might it might be possible that I'm supposed to just, like, sit tight on the Scavenging Goose until I can play it with things in the graveyard to eat right away. Because we could get Wasteland Strangler here, and then I might be in a little bit of trouble. Ha, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, magic, magic online is basically unwatchable if you're not heavily invested in the formats that are, that are being played and don't know everything that's going on. It's one of the reasons why magic on Twitch has never grown anywhere. And it's like less exciting too, right? There's no, there's no fancy graphics or anything like that. All right, so at this point, we really need a lead the stampede or another scavenging ooze or a lord effect here. Way to make our elves larger. Cavern of Souls. It's exactly what we wanted for Christmas. Oh, they got to process my clan caller out from under here. Shaman is also good, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, Shaman is also lethal. That's going to pass for now. I don't want to trade off aggressively because Shaman draws are lethal at this point. MG MTGO is old enough to drive a car. Wait for another Lord before throwing two elves away. So if you listen to the words that came out of my mouth, um, I didn't throw those elves away for one point of damage. I threw those elves away so I could put creatures in my discard pile for the scavenging ooze that I had in play because getting my scavenging ooze large had value. I agree that throwing two elves away for one point of damage is not a worthwhile exchange. That's why I didn't throw them away for two points of damage. I threw them away so I could have bodies for the scavenging ooze. All right. If they don't have another piece of removal here, we could be in a good spot. And I'm actually not going to attack here because I want to leave up the ability to activate my overrun. In case they have another Wasteland Strangler here. All right, they don't have mana to activate that currently. All right, they need a, need a way to get rid of Azuri here. So they can activate Eldrazi Displacer now, but that doesn't really put them in a good spot to do anything here. Because even if they Displacer their Wasteland Strangler and then process targeting Azuri, I make six mana and then uh, give all my elves plus three, plus three till end of turn. Do I have a favorite card in Magic Arena? It's my favorite pirate. Thief of Sanity is not a pirate, but it's kind of a sweet card that I like. Yeah, I have, uh, I have two cards in Exile. I have uh, an Elvish Clan Caller and an Arc Druid that they passed to Exile. Oh, yeah, actually, I'm going to take that back. It's got to be Angrath. The animations on Angrath are just too good to not pick him. I had forgotten about our Lord and Savior, the Minotaur. Activate. This has got to be lethal, right? They've got one card. I don't know. Figure it out. 
These things all trample. They're at six and have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points of defense. I'm attacking for this is uh this is a, what did they what did they just do? They blinked my token. So this is eleven. This is eleven alone right here. So like even if they have flicker wisp here, we're still good. I think. I think I believe I believe they're just dead. No matter how they slice this, they they almost stabilized there. They hit they hit a good mix of disruption right at the end there. Huh. I don't know how I want to sideboard this matchup. Scavenging news doesn't seem particularly stellar. Because of all their processor crap. I wonder if I want Reclamation Sage. Yeah, Reclamation Sage doesn't seem unreasonable. I think I want to keep the two lead, lead the Stampedes that I have, but I don't think I want to board up to four. And I don't think they have enough high impact targets that Dismember's worth bringing in. Is Revoker good enough? Revoker shuts off Displacer and Vial. I can see that being okay. Like, Displacer can be, like, pretty annoying, depending on how long the game goes. Yeah, Rex Sage hits Sculler. I don't really know what I want to trim here, though. Like, I feel like I want the lead the Stampedes. Maybe they're just too slow on the draw. It's like lead the stampede or clan caller, but like clan callers, like having lords is pretty good in this matchup. It's like they have a lot of two twos and I have a lot of one ones. I'm actually just gonna bring in the revoker instead of the rex sages. I think I'd rather have a vile, vile displacer off card rather than a tight hollow scholar vile off card. I'm gonna just bring in the revokers rather than just bring in the, bring in the sages. They, they run Arbiter, but we don't really care about Leon and Arbiter. The card doesn't really have a text box against us. This is an excellent Hearthstone hand. Unfortunately, as far as Magic the Gathering is concerned, we need to take a mulligan. Need some, need some lands to play. Oh, this hand's not fantastic, but I think it's keep. I get a scry if I just run off a couple elves here, which there are, there's a couple elves in our deck. We could be in a good spot. They keep a medium hand in the back of Aether Vial. Friction Revoker can punish them. I think I'm supposed to bottom that. Just try and hit, hit my elves. That is not the elf I'm looking for. If we're a true professional, we'll draw Dwinnin's Elite next turn. So that way we can go Elite into Elvish Shark Dread. Ideally, we'd settle for any one or two mana elf, though. Yeah, Clan, clan Callers are only search effect. And, like, by the time you're activating Clan Caller, like, paying eight versus paying six usually, usually is pretty marginal. I think I'd rather play the Elvish Mystic than the Frexion Revoker here, because the Elvish, Elvish Mystic means that they don't have a discard spell or a way to kill this next turn. I do get to play the Collected Company, which is nice. Uh, Revoker does not stop Shambling Vent. I'd encourage you, I would encourage you to read Frexion Revoker. So if they have uh, Wasteland Strangler here, we could die. It's going to put us pretty far behind. If they have Wasteland Strangler for the Elvish Mystic here, we basically need to hit Dwinnin's Elite next turn so we can get some critical mass going again. If 
They don't have a way to take this Mystic off the table, though. We're going to be in a very good spot. And we get to keep the company. I guess they can have a discard spell for the company, too. It would also be mediocre for us. Worth noting that, like, if this Revoker had been Rex Sage, I'd be in a better spot here against this uh, Titala Skiller as well. Displacer, sure. Let's cast this now, so that way we can put two Elves into play and then cast Revoker and turn off Displacer. So what's better here? An extra Shaman Trigger or Dwinin's Elite? I actually think Dwinin's Elite might be better here, huh? Because it's more bodies. The Shaman of the Packs can attack into the 3-3 three, three profitably, though. I kind of think I want more bodies with the Heritage Druid, though. I think it's, I think it's more bodies. Again, put the Shaman of the Pack trigger on the stack before the Dwinin Elite trigger, so that way we have the extra elf when the Shaman trigger resolves. The token's not going to be displaced. I'm playing Friction Revoker. And this is, this is a spot where I'm pretty happy to have Lead the Stampedes in my deck on top of Collecting Company. So, like, those are the two cards I'm hoping to draw in positions like this, right? Just, like, cards that generate a critical mass of other cards. We do get to cycle this Rising Canopy next turn, though, so we get two looks at uh, some high-impact stuff. And by that, I mean they're going to go Squirter my Horizon Canopy here. Uh, thought Knots here. Deal. Glad, glad we emptied the old hand out. Really, really glad I took the Dwinin's Elite instead of the Shaman of the Pack now, too, because, like, the three power doesn't matter in the face of a 4-4. One good spell, please. Eh, you know, there were, there were worse cards we could have drawn. Yep, yeah, we're currently in match uh, four of five in this league. We are two and one. We're up a game here against this Texas deck. This one could kind of go either way, depending on what they draw and what we draw. Get my auto pass on here. Any Lord is okay. Azuri's pretty fantastic. Um, Clan Caller is actually pretty good because with the Heritage Druid, the Clan Caller is going to get to activate a bunch and like create an insurmountable board advantage. Companies lead the Stampede. So looking for looking for high impact ones here again. They're down to two cards in hand. Okay, so this is going to, yeah. Yeah, that's probably game. You need, need to hit a good one like this turn. Maybe, maybe two turns. If they have a sixth untapped land next turn, they get to start double displacering. Which means if they can double displacer, they can blink the Tide Hollow Skeller and blink the Strangler every turn, which is going to bury us very quickly. I don't know. I talked about that and I said I wasn't sure what I wanted to cut. It's very possible I should have all four leads in my deck. Like this game, they don't, the opponent's deck doesn't really get under us. I don't know. On the draw, I feel like it's possible that my opponent could have an aggressive enough start that the lead the Stampedes could clunk up. But when I'm on the play, I think maybe we're going to bring them all in. The Refraction Revoker was just like kind of whatever here. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and concede here because they're just gonna they're gonna blink this and get this and they'll blink the wasteland strangler and start killing my stuff. I think I'm actually I think I'm actually just gonna swap the not nah, bring the friction revokers in and just bring in the uh bring in the last two lead the stampedes. I 
I think the Revoker should probably just stay stay in the board for the higher impact matchups like KCI and Tron. And like again, this is this is a good example. Like people have been asking that like really want to see these revokers in actions. This is something you really need to understand. Playing random matches of magic is not good testing when you're trying to figure out sideboard cards, especially. Good magic testing consists of sitting down with the deck you want to play and playing explicitly against another reasonable magic player, playing the matchup that you care about, and testing lots of different setups and configurations. Play, playing random matches of magic can be fun because playing magic's a game and games are fun, but this isn't what I would consider good testing. So if you're someone who's really serious that wants to like test rigorously, this is not what you should be doing. Playing random matches of magic online, arena, or even, even your local game store is not good magic testing. What would you play? I'd play Black Green Elves. You can find a budget Black Green Elves deck list on my article on Cool Stuff Inc. Again, you can build this deck, Sands, the Cavern of Souls, and Guiltleaf Palaces for like 300 bucks. It's been a year. Didn't realize it's been that long. Thank you, Jesus, for the 12 months. I knight thee, defender of the realm. Go forth and protect us from Twitch chat. Thanks for the support. Yeah, I agree, Wax Papers. Like, I only boarded two cards, right? Like, we, we stuck to our primary game plan. I boarded exactly two cards. And, like, I agree that this matchup's pretty good for the elf deck, but, like, good doesn't mean unlosable, right? So, looking for high-impact cards here, as always. Cocos, lead the stampedes, etc. Second Arc Druid's not terrible. Attack for three. So if they have... If they have Wasteland Strangler, they get to get rid of our Land War Elves, kill our Arc Druid. But then I still have another Arc Druid here, so if we draw a high impact spell, we could potentially get going still. Yep, this is their this is their best possible start against one of our mediocre draws. So this is definitely you know, on good a favorable doesn't mean un 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 unlosable, right? So their their best start against one of our mediocre starts is definitely one of the ways they can they can steal. That's magic sometimes. I think I'm just gonna hang tight for now. I don't really want to trade off my elves, it makes my shaman of the packs worse, it makes my arc druid worse. Is Eldrazi taxes? Poop poop bears is Eldrazi and taxes. They're they're the same thing, Quarth. Yeah, the reasoning for having Pendlehaven is that you don't always have a lord. And sometimes Pendlehaven's really, really good when you don't have a lord. Perfect. Maybe. Maybe perfect. Let's find out. Alright. I mean, that could have that could have gone worse, right? And like, they likely don't have a removal spell here, right? Because if they had a removal spell, they probably would have killed the Arctrid. I mean, it's not really rough if they're dead next turn, Tom. Like, if they if they don't have a removal spell, they're dead to just like double Azuri activation next turn. It was, it was a good divination. It was a divination that drew two spells. Like, even when your lead the stampedes are, like, just okay and they only draw two cards, you're like, well, this was green divination that drew two spells. Like, it's still fine. No, today's all all modern. All modern and magic online. Tomorrow will be all standard all day. We'll be starting about 9 a.m. Central Standard Time or a little bit before. Be here 9 to 5 doing standard tomorrow. 
Remember, you can always find more of my standard content on my YouTube channel, my website. We played some standard last night. We played a really awesome red-white land destruction deck last night that if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend checking it out. All right, so they're dead. And again, like, this was one of their better possible starts against one of our mediocre draws. And just like, we hit a lead the stampede and they died. So I think the person that suggested, should we just have lead the stampedes in our deck was correct. I don't, I don't even Coco here, right? It's just like plus six across the board. Cause it's just like this into this into pay down here and activate this again. Smush. Figure it out. It's a math test that might not have any correct answers. You do you. I like, I like the dog. I can appreciate the dog pile on Azuri to just like take down the thing that killed them as they go. Driving in my car, beep, beep. All right, three and three and one. Guaran guaranteed to get our fun buckaroos back, which feels good. The stack. I think we've only like not three twoed or better with this deck like one time in a dozen plus leagues. Very, very consistent. Again, just like the reason why I love it. This hand's very good. Turn one, deep shadow, turn two, deep shadow, druid, arc druid. Turn three, lead the stampede, gas up, attack, attack, attack. Put it mulligan to five. Seems really good against Tron and pretty good against Bogles, which are the two decks that mulligan a lot. It's decent against Dredge too, because it's just like pretty linear. Dredge, Dredge, Tron, and Bogles are the three decks that mulligan more than any other deck in modern. So like whenever my opponent mulligans a lot, I usually assume it's one of those. Control, some kind of control deck, okay. Revoker's fine. It's not, it's not impressive, but it's fine. It's a, card, it's a card I'm happy to have. Jeez, what a, what a monster interacting with me. Eh, I probably should play the Guilt Leaf there. The value of like leaving a card they don't know in my hand is pretty small. And the fact that that land's gonna be tapped next turn could come back and bite me. All right, eight power, go. Collective Brutality. Some kind of control deck. Grr, arg. Deck you down to 15. I have six power in play. Bitter Blossom. Okay, fairies sounds like. This matchup's probably pretty okay for us. Depends on how many sweepers they have on their board. And you know, if they can find them. I'm gonna leave this in my hand because it's an untapped land because there could be value in like making them play a discard spell into my blank. Never hold two lands usually, but holding one land is fine, especially against a deck full of discard spells. Nah, I thought about Beast Whisperer and it just, it doesn't, I can't think of any problems that it solves that I have. So I decided not to bother. Even even just like trading my elves off for their fairy rogues here is fine because like Bitter Blossom's likely going to kill them at some point. They paused during my draw step there, so I wonder if they have a Vendillion click. So like play that and trade with Dwinnin's Elite here. Clicking themselves makes a lot of sense here, trying to get a clunky card out of their hand and hit things that are meaningful in direction. And I assume we're going to see them go trade, trade, take three down to five here. 
Yeah, trade here, trade here. I like I like the choices my opponents made so far this game with the tools that they've had. Well, obviously I don't know everything that they've done. I think I would have made a lot of the same choices with the onboard information. Uh, what's his name? The the person that top aided the Grand Prix uh, tweeted that they won the modern challenge yesterday with fairies. Obviously too old for the internet. No, Thing, Thing Bird is unplayable without Manamorphose. It's re really, really bad without the card. That card, that card enables all of your most busted starts. So they're going to go block, block here, go to one. I'll play this Land War Elves out, then like they're dead to their Bitter Blossom the following turn. Even they're dead to my attack and they're dead to their Bitter Blossom the following turn. Yeah, the decks, the decks that play Manamorphose, generally Manamorphose is the most important card in the deck. Yeah, MT, MTG Finance is obnoxious, for sure. All right, so this is a matchup where Lead the Stampede is great because it... Uh, Leave the Stampede is good because they're killing lots of our elves. I think I just don't care about Scavenging Ooze in this matchup because of their Bitter Blossoms. Like, normally you like Scavenging Ooze in the matches where they're killing all of our stuff. But, I don't know, maybe maybe it's better than Azuri. Actually, I'm going to do that. Azuri's kind of mediocre. Let's do that. Let's cut the Azuris for the Leave the Stampedes. Because, like, if they're killing all of our stuff, Azuri gets much worse, too. Because, like, he's only good when we have a critical mass of elves in play. I don't, I don't think I care about Bitter Blossom enough to bring in Rex Sage before someone asks about that question. So let's just, let's just do this. This will hopefully be our last game with Elves if we win. If we don't, we'll play a third game in this match before we move on to Sultai Mill as our last deck for the afternoon. Well, we're bottoming anything that's not a land or a mana dork here. So a really common misconception among Magic players who lack experience playing best of three and sideboarding is that just because you often board a card out in the post-board games doesn't mean that card isn't worth playing. Something that's really common, especially in formats like Modern, where decks can be very linear, is that um, something that's very common is that you will often, in these decks that have proactive game plans, you will often have, okay, so I got punished. I should have played Elvish Mystic on one, because this can't make green to play this, so I played the wrong Manador because I was talking. Um, decks that are heavily aggressive or linear, like this one, game one, will often become less so in the post-board games as they slow down and become more interactive or bring in cards to fight the cards that you expect your opponents to be playing. So like Azuri is a card that's very good with our linear game plan, but otherwise is mediocre when our opponents are interacting with our, our linear game plan more. They have sort of fire and ice in their deck. Woof. How do I beat that card? All right, I think it starts with this. Into this. Into this. So maybe just like they're killing something regardless here. The fact they have a sword means I'm going to bring the Rex Sages in for the third game, I think. I don't know.
Oh, I could have played the Land War Elf too. Yeah, I was just, I'm just, I'm just really sloppy. This should be in play. I could have played this off of this and then tap one, two, three to play the Arc Druid. So if I do this, I can then activate Heritage Druid off of these three and then play this. And like if I was plus one man, I could put another thing into play this turn. But I'm not because I messed up. If we, if we draw enough cards here, we might be able to power through this. Is that a really good draw for? Yeah, my uh, my sequ my sequencing here is just kind of snowballed. I think I would have been able to overpower the Sword of Fire and Ice here if I'd have sequenced correctly, but I didn't. So now we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So like next turn, hopefully I can just like play all five of these and then some. They do have they do have seven cards in their hand here though, so it's like. Oh, do that into this, into this, into this, into this, and to pick these two up, and to play this. This getting spell that are sprayed in, spell snared, sure. Yeah, I think we're I think we're likely still dead here. to the next one i think we could have i think we could have beaten the sword of fire knights there with better with better play on my part but i left a little bit a little bit a couple too many small percentage points on the play now nah, they like almost certainly have counter spells and stuff like that in their hand i guess i could have drawn cavern of souls I could have drawn cavern of souls there it was a good good number of elves to put into play considering one was dying every turn It's from your Daniel Tiger thing. Yeah, it, 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 it's for it. Does your mother know you're down here? Yeah. She does? Mm -hmm. Are you lying? No. No, you're not lying? Oh, uh, mommy's packing up our, our belt and stuff upstairs right now. Oh, mommy's packing up upstairs? Yeah. Get upstairs. I'm down here right now. I, I want to watch how do you play the game. <laughs> oh. Can you say hi to the internet, Declan? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Internet Daddy. Hi, Internet Daddy. Did I say you could come down here? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you're funny? Heritage Druid. Heritage Druid! <laughs> I stay down here all my 
I'm stay down here. Alright, I think you gotta go back upstairs with mom, bud. No. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, I do. I can't. Uh, this is a, you know what? It's very possible I should have, it's very possible I should have played Lead the Stampede on two to play around Collective, Br excuse me, Collective Brutality. Yeah, I think, I think maybe I should have Stampeded on two to play around Brutality, taking it away. I don't know. Got a lot of power in play right now. I'm attacking for seven this turn. They don't if they don't have a damnation we'll be in a very good spot here it's like i hit them I hit them for seven down to 15 then like even if they hit my clan caller i still have uh five power in play and like any any reasonable number of uh live draws at that point that's that's the younger one marty Would really like to, I honestly wouldn't mind drawing a land here even. Because if I, if I hit a land, we could activate Clan Caller. Yeah, Declan, Declanese is conver converging on English very quickly. I'm not going to attack with this one because I don't want to trade it for a Vendillion Click. No, I haven't played much of the Phoenix deck, Weatherlight, and I'm not I'm not even sure I really like it, honestly. I know, like, a lot of people have been doing well with it, obviously, but I'm just not a huge fan of the games that it generates, personally. All right. Damnation me. Go. Uh, I'm just going to untap and play a Sweeper, aren't they? Them playing a creature here is really good for us, because it means they don't either don't have a land for the Sweeper yet, or they don't have the Sweeper yet itself. So... You're saying you're saying there's a chance. Psionic blast. There's a there's a spicy one. All right, is my board dead? Something, something's dead here. Is it my board or is it you, opponent? Dealer's, dealer's choice, pick one. Yep, all right, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a middle ground. Wait, did they, did they double escalate that for no reason? My hand is empty. They must not have been paying attention to the fact that my hand was empty. All right, so looking for uh, any of our high impact cards here, per per usual. A lot of our high impact cards end the game on the spot. No, they gained, they discarded Psionic Blast and Spell Snare. I think I think that was uh they didn't notice my hand was empty and could see. I I mean I don't even actually think they're dead there, but I guess I'll take it. I think I think they just weren't paying attention. All right, we got a we got a four one there. A little bit of a little bit of a freebie, freebie at the end. Um, this is my elves list. We played a ton of elves on stream. I like every card in this deck. Um, the Phyrexian Revoker is the newest edition. I think it's a fine slot in the sideboard. It's nothing that you write home about, but it like has impact enough matchups that I think it's relevant. The important thing to note about Phyrexian Revoker is that because it can't name lands, it does shut off mana abilities which means that it turns off Crocklon Ironworks. So you want to board that card in against that matchup. So look at that. We made back, uh, we made back you know, half the $12 that we lost because treasure chests are worth almost nothing right now. Yay, Magic Online Economy. 